Hekka, a word that means magic. This was the mysterious ancient force used by the creator Ra to invoke the world of ancient Egypt. As everyone and everything were created from this one powerful metaphysical source, it was believed that gods and mortals alike could practice magic. The gods were the embodiment of the creator's power, like powerful jewels that reflected each facet of Egyptian life. Each ruled over their own realm and it was up to lectors, priests, and ordinary citizens to access their favors through the use of rituals, symbols, and amulets. Hekka was everyday magic. In ancient Egypt, both priests and ordinary people used Hekka to end suffering or save a life. Egyptian rituals could also buy you luck, fidelity, sex, prosperity, fertility, and miraculous returns from the brink of death. A generous donation to the temple could guarantee a peaceful end and safe passage through the underworld to the kingdom of the afterlife. Both gods and mortals alike also used their powers to curse others in the name of lust, murder, and revenge. Egyptian Gods of Pleasure There were over 2,000 deities worshipped in the Egyptian pantheon, and all were capable of being wicked. However, some deities were darker than others and more likely to grant a wicked request. When it came to revenge, spurned lovers could turn to Ejo, the cobra goddess, who punished unfaithful mates with her astral poison. If you actually wanted to kill someone, a curse from Selket, the scorpion goddess, could bring a plague on your enemy's house. Nekpet, the vulture goddess, would have you triumphant, laughing with one foot over the neck of your rival's dying body. There were also Egyptian gods you could petition if you simply wanted to have a good time. Geb, the crocodile god, assisted with fertility, and Min, the god of sexuality, promised a wild night of fornication. Hathor, queen of the skies, granted opportunities for gluttony and drunkenness. Egyptian Black Magic Rituals Priests, magicians, and scorpion charmers were the main practitioners of Hekka rituals in ancient Egypt. These guardians of the kingdom possessed secret knowledge that could help ordinary desperate mortals ward off the cruel blows of fate. The most respected were the lector priests, keepers of the ancient books of magic, who could do incredible things such as cause floodwaters to retreat, bring wax animals to life, or paralyze enemies of the pharaoh. Magicians performed rituals to trick your target into doing your will and scorpion charmers sent scorpions out into the night to poison your rivals. Egyptian black magic rituals were done just before dawn, as the rising sun symbolized the state of purity. Participants bathed in the Nile and dressed in clean robes. No beforehand contact with polluted people such as embalmers or women was allowed. Sex was also forbidden. Symbols were carved onto staffs and ivory horns to drive away jealous spirits or rebound spells. Stabbing, biting snakes, and sickle moon symbols were used to repel evil. The priest waved the staff across the sky to summon the gods and goddesses, just as the sun rose over the ancient pyramids. Incantations, Music, and Dance If your family had a collection of written spells passed down through the ages, you were considered wealthy. That is because only the priests and magicians could read the hieroglyphs on the paper. This was the power of the written word in Egypt. Protective and healing spells were sometimes anointed with special oils, written on papyrus, folded up and worn on the body. Incantations were spoken over a potion, amulet, or figurine to activate their powers. The secret names of the gods being summoned had to be pronounced correctly, or you would curse yourself. Shaking rattles, tambourines, and stomping the ground would scatter demonic forces that might interfere with the spell. Furious drumming and dancing put participants in a trance, and chanting sacred words and names would seal the spell. Spells written on papyrus were anointed with strange ingredients such as human placenta, the blood of a black dog or snake venom. Totem animals or symbols of eternal life were worn to amplify the spell's power and protect the wearer from evil energies. Sometimes the names of beloved royalty were inscribed on the amulet with a wish for similar fertility, riches, and a long life. Egyptian Witch Doctors Not all magic was used for nefarious reasons. 
Some black magic spells were used to reverse illness or reanimate the dead. Egyptian witch doctors shouted the names of demons to encourage them to leave a sick person's body. A healing god such as Horus of the famous Eye of Horus would act out the god's myth to channel healing energies. Since demons were repulsed by foul things, dung was sometimes used to encourage them to flee the body of the sick person. Images of deities such as Sekhmet were drawn on the skin in honey and then licked off by the patient. Spells were inscribed on stone slabs, and many of them were placed in the middle of the desert, such as the statue of Ramesses III that is still to this day, inscribed with spells banishing snakes. People would pour water over the inscription on the stone slab and then drink it or use it to wash their wounds. Egyptian curses were practiced with nothing other than the complete and total eradication of the enemy in mind. The names of enemies and traitors were inscribed on clay figurines, pots, and tablets, created from the mud of the Nile, and then objects were burned, broken, and buried in cemeteries to weaken or destroy the enemy. Egyptian Gods of Death Ancient Egyptians were very concerned about their fate in the afterlife and would appeal for favors in the underworld from Anubis, the jackal-headed god of death. Anubis used a balancing scale to weigh the heart of a deceased person. If it was not lighter than the weight of a feather, then your soul would be clamped in the fiery jaws of Taurat, the hippopotamus goddess. Your soul would be consumed whole and your heart destroyed forever. However, Taurat could be bribed with spells to allow criminals to pass through the underworld to the afterlife. Speaking of criminals, Anubis had a jackal-headed brother, Wepawat, who was the god of the necropolis. He could help protect thieves from robbing your grave, or if you were broke, help you rob one without suffering from a retaliating family curse. Sounds a bit like the mob had its roots ancient mobster. Battling the Great Chaos Serpent Apophis The Great Chaos Serpent Apophis was a monstrous deity that was believed to be at the root of all evil. Apophis was a dark force that was always at war with the forces of light and had to be battled daily by good people or it would take over the world. Images of the snake were drawn on papyrus or modeled in wax and then spat on, trampled, stabbed, and burned. Then the scraps of paper were dissolved in buckets of urine. During the ceremony, deities were summoned to destroy Apophis, but truly evil people would try to harness the energies of the serpent to become powerful. People could participate in these rituals by supplying figurines of their enemies for destructions. Figurines were often made from wax and were considered more effective if they contained hair, nail clippings, or bodily fluids. These could be obtained from brothel workers who were paid handsomely for these personal items. Death Hekka was big business. Egyptians used black magic to preserve their bodies and souls in the afterlife. Curses were inscribed in grave walls and on tomb walls. The mummified body was further protected by amulets and funerary texts. The Egyptian Book of the Dead was often included in the coffin so that the soul would know the right magic words and gestures to use to overcome any demons encountered along the way to eternal life. Egyptian Black Magic is Forever Hekka is at the root of many magical traditions practiced by today's Alexandrians, Wiccans, and Neo-Pagans. The practice of writing petitions on pieces of paper and burning or burying finds its origins in Egyptian black magic, as does the burning of incense, creating figurines or poppets and anointing objects with a potion. Cursing one's enemies with the use of symbols or by manipulating hair, fingernails, or clothing, or carrying paper or amulets scrawled with amulets is also a tradition that has been passed down from ancient Egypt to today, as is the practice of trance channeling, where a human host embodies the spirit of a deity or deceased ancestor. Practitioners of Ancient Egyptian Black Magic, beware! Hekka can cause continual financial problems, poverty, chronic illnesses, strife, accidents, and suicides for those who are the target of your wrath. There is an old saying that, curses have a way of coming home to roost. So, be careful with playing with ancient black magic, lest the fickle ancient power sends that hateful energy right back to you. So what do you think? Would you be brave enough to use a spell or would you just accept your fate? Tell us in the comments.
And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.